Hi guys, Lewis Turner here for Guitar Clinic. Um, in this lesson, we are going to talk about arpeggiating through a major 2-5-1 progression and how to practice doing that. So just to recap what a major 2-5-1 is, what I mean by that. Uh, a major 2-5-1 is literally a 2, a 5 and a 1 chord that you'd find in a major scale. So if we took the key of G major, um, so my 2 chord of G major is an A minor, my 5 chord is a D7, and my 1 chord is a G major 7. So we're talking about extended chords here rather than just major and minor. So we've got A minor 7, D7, and a G major 7. Now this is the very staple of jazz music, 2-5-1s um, pretty much occur in every single tune that you'll ever play and every single standard that you'll play happens to have a major 2-5-1 in it. So they're really, really important for you to be able to play through. So in the other lesson, Arpeggio is a King, we looked at learning the main arpeggio types. Major 7, Dominant 7, Minor 7, and Minor 7 flat 5. And if you've got that down, uh, this little lesson is going uh, uh, to be your next step on from that. So arpeggiating through these changes. So uh, the diatonics, they all belong in the same key, so we don't necessarily need to. We could just play a G major scale over the whole thing and it would sound pretty authentic. However, that's not the jazz way. And uh, <laughs> learning this stuff will also just um, you know, improve your playing in general. It's a good thing to do. So if you have a look at the, the downloadable tab, um, notation, whatever you want to call it, you'll see all these examples in there. Um, you should do them all to a click as well is the other thing. And just play them straight rhythm. Don't worry too much about swinging it at the minute. So here's what we're going to do. So um, your aim is to be able to do this across the entire fretboard. So what I mean is, so if I'm playing A minor here, I'm thinking of this shape and I'm thinking of this arpeggio shape. D7. I'm uh, thinking of this arpeggio shape. And G major 7, I'm thinking of this arpeggio shape. Okay, so they're the arpeggios that go with each of those chords in, in the same position. That's the thing to say. So we're not shifting up and down the fretboard, all in one position. Um, you then take that across the rest of the fretboard. So my next A minor will be here. My next D7 would be here. And there's a G major 7. and so on and so forth until you can do it in all five shapes, okay? So that's, um, that's the first thing for you to, to check out that you can do, is you can play every single um, two, five, one in the kind of the five cage shapes um, across the fretboard. Now, we, what we're gonna look at now, I'm gonna assume that you can do that. And what we're gonna look at now is the, the, how to practice this. So here, some of the examples that I've written out for you are, we're just gonna take this one shape for this lesson, this one position here, down here at the fifth fret between the fifth and third fret. So your first exercise is to play up and down each shape. So A minor, D7, G major seven. Okay, without breaks in between. And you do that to a tick. Your next one is to then play up one and down the next in the same area. So I'm gonna play up A minor, down D7, now the reason I went up and down G major 7 is because normally um, that's a, a two, bar, two bar sequence on the G, so a typical progression would be going like A minor, 1, 2, 3, 4, D7, G7 for two bars. Yeah, so that again, here it is again, so up and down each one, so up A, down D, up and down G. The next example was then to do that backwards, and the reason I say this is because I see loads and loads of players that struggle with this kind of thing in memorizing shapes, and it's normally because they learn everything from here, you know, you think about your scales, you start here, and you practice it. And the minute someone says, okay, play me whatever, lydium, starting from the highest string, you go like, ah, what is that? So we need to do the same with the arpeggio. So uh, descending A minor, ascending 
D and coming back down G. Again in the same timing, so it'll be like this, three, four. Yeah. Um, so that's those ones there. So we've had up and down each shape to get it in your head. Then we've gone up one and down the other, and then down one and up the next. Okay, once you've got that sorted, the next trickiest one from that is to be able to change in any place. So you're not dictated to like the end of the arpeggio changing, so somewhere in between. And you kind of need to tweak uh, how many notes you have so you end up with an odd number. Um, so you kind of change in between. So what I mean is, here it is real slow. So I'm going to take A. And then here I'm going to, rather than just going ba I'm going to, I'm going to kind of add an extra note to make it odd for the D7. And two, and three, and four, and. So I'm there now. So now I change to G in my next nearest note there. One, and two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. So that puts me there for my A. Now I'm there for my D. There's my G, so I'm kind of working my way back up. A. G. So I'm slowly getting further and further this way to the shapes. Ah, see. Sorry. Can't talk and play. So in some sort of time, I'll do a couple of that, so... so on and so forth so you're kind of trying to change in the middle of the arpeggio that's real tricky to do that really uh, it requires you to know your shapes really really well so to recap we've got a major 251 in the key of G so those are the chords of A minor 7 D7 G major 7 and what we're doing is we're arpeggiating around those chords so using the arpeggios that we previously learned from the other arpeggios a king lesson um, so you're just playing you're just playing the arpeggios in position and working your way up the fretboard, yeah? So you're, you then do it in the next shape. So you can do it anywhere on the fretboard. So if I was here, for example, A, D, and so on, yeah? So you can cover the entire fretboard doing those exercises there. Check out the downloadable uh, PDFs uh, in the description um, and let me know how you get on. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this lesson, please like and subscribe to the Guitar Clinic channel for loads of cool guitar-related stuff. Cheers, guys. See you next time.